shooting a video about the focal points of a kitchen when you're designing and we wanted to come back and do a second video about the things that you might not be thinking about that are super important for a kitchen. So one of the things to think about when you are designing a kitchen is the electrical outlets. If you were going to be doing something like a waterfall island in your kitchen and that is where you take your countertop and you go all the way down both sides or if you have this beautiful island with uh you know paneled ends you don't really want to see electrical outlets no right mm -mm. that's the last thing but you need them and you have to have it's them for the code. inspection yes. <laughs> yeah. yes so one of the things that we like to do is we actually use a plug mold that we put underneath the edge of the countertop on the surface side or on the underside of an island. And that way you don't interrupt the ends of your island with an unsightly electrical outlet. You can take these plug molds and get them in many different colors that actually just kind of go away and fade into your cabinetry or underneath your countertop. And you can cut them down to the size that you need them to be. I, I honestly think those are probably the best options for yeah. most islands. Um, but there are other ones that we want to cover just yes. so everyone is informed. Um, they have like a pop-up option that would have to actually be inside of your stone. But you have to cut a hole in your countertop. And is that something you really want to do? After it's a gamble. You spend all this money, right? Yeah. I mean, how do you know that that's going to like stay forever? Well, you don't. Yeah. And if something <laughs> happens to that outlet and you have to replace it and maybe that outlet's not available anymore, or maybe it's a new size now and it no longer fits in the hole that you have in the countertop, um, that's going to be a big fat bummer. Mm -hmm. And the other reason why we don't like them, they are crumb catchers. They yeah. have a tendency to get uh, crumbs where they pop up and down out of and the countertop. And maybe liquids. I mean, yeah. spills happen. Right. But you short out your outlet and then you have to get another one again. It might not fit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's the ones that look like little smiley faces. <laughs> yeah, those are great. Uh, so that's a company by the name of Bocce. And uh, you can buy just one outlet. Um, you can buy four in a row. You can do whatever you would like to do. Um, but they literally, it's just the receptacle that yeah. you see. And so it really just kind of goes away. You don't have the unsightly plate cover that you do on a traditional outlet. They are more expensive, quite a bit more expensive. So maybe they might be reserved for like if you did your backsplash in slab, maybe it's reserved for there. If you have in your island and you want to put it maybe inside of the leg or um, on the side of a drawer or a side of a cabinet door, you can actually make a little space to uh, route out the wood and put them inside of the wood. Those ones, um, the Legrand, right? So mm -hmm. those are like the square with the plate. And it does have a plate, but you can custom make a plate cover to go around that in wood or your countertop material yeah. or your tile, whatever it is. And so all you're left with is that square by square. That square, you just punch on it, it pops out, and you can have, you know, one, two, three, four outlets on it. And that is really cool. And then there is a, a pop out one. Like if you have your island and this will get popped out of the side, um, I don't, I have to say like, it's not our fan favorite because mm -hmm. it's going to protrude. And then if you plug anything into that, that's even more, you know, in your walkway. I have to tell you every time. So it's, it's essentially the same one that pops up from the countertop and they plug it, put it into the side Sideways, of a cabinet. Yeah. And so it pops out. So now you have this extension of an outlet. And I always see this little kid running through the kitchen, <laughs> plonking his head I on know. that. Yeah. And now your outlet's broken too. Same thing with those like little mailbox doors, I call them, you know, where they come down and then there's the plug in. It's like, but you have to keep that down to plug something in. So here again, it's coming out and boom. Yeah, yeah. So 
that was the only way we had to do it for years. Mm -hmm. There's so many ways to hide the outlets now. We all need outlets. You have to have them. Yeah. But there's better ways of doing it. And then we have to talk about when we're planning the backsplash. I mm -hmm. mean, some of us love these amazing stones that are going to be put mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. or this awesome tile. And then you mm -hmm. just have like the eyesore that's there that's mandated. So we got to do something with it. That's true. Yeah. So if you have a, a beautiful slab that you don't want to interrupt, if you have tile that has a lot of movement, maybe it's uh, dimensional, it's not flat, right? Well, when you go to put an outlet on the wall, you're going to have gaps for every place that it's you yeah. know, going in and out. Um, so that's not really ideal for you. You don't really have a place to put an outlet. So how you do that is you put it up underneath the cabinetry and you can use the same plug mold that we showed you on the island. Um, but they also make one that is angular yeah. so that it's a little easier to plug in. The plug molds that are flat that go up underneath the cabinetry, you kind of have to get down and look and plug it in. Where the one that's in an angle, you can actually see that how to plug it in and yeah. so it's easier to plug in. The thing to know though is that you'll have to unplug, well you don't have to, but if you don't want to see a cord running up your backsplash, yeah you're going to want to unplug, unplug. Your, all of your appliances that you're not using. Another option is to take like your typical outlet mm -hmm. and instead of going vertical, horizontal and mm -hmm. try to blend it. Definitely would take your outlets and go lower with them as close to the countertop as you can. Uh, you don't want it all the way down and nor can you do that, but uh, you do want it down low so that when you plug in your small appliances, it's hidden yeah. and you won't see it. Yeah. Going horizontal, the other benefit is that they're easier to use. Yeah. You never have an outlet that's over one another. And then you can always still do like the pop-ups if you are willing to risk mm -hmm. cutting into your countertop. Mm -hmm. um, and then the Legrand square pop-out ones, you can always do those. Yeah. So there are other options, yeah. um, just whatever seems to work best for your backsplash. Right. I think the point we're trying to make if you're going to spend any money on doing your kitchen, you do not want to see an outlet in your pretty cabinetry, in your pretty countertop, or your backsplash. So the other thing is lighting. And so I'm going to start with under cabinet lighting. So the one that we really like to use is an LED tape. And it just literally just goes right up underneath your countertop or down in your toe kick. And it seamlessly you really can't even see it. The downside with the tape is that you can at times, especially in polished surfaces, see the dots. And so they make a channel for it to go into that looks a lot like the plug mold that we were talking about. And the top of the channel has a diffuser that diffuses those dots yeah. and Blends eliminates mm -hmm. the glare. Mm -hmm. Because once you get rid of the dots, then you also have a glare that you have to deal with. So this diffuser does both and it's the perfect way to address it. It's very clean, um, seamless, you can't see it. But it is something you have to take into account before. Yes, so yes. if you are going to use that channel um, there's only two ways to really do it and that's to integrate it into the bottom of your cabinetry. So if you're doing new cabinetry, um, you can plan for that ahead of time. You can recess it into the bottom of the cabinet. They do that by doing a faux bottom and then you recess it. The other way to do that is to make either the fronts, uh, the boxes of your cabinets longer in front so that it hides that. Um, there is a third way you can do it by putting a light rail, which is like a trim detail at the bottom of your cabinets. It's a very traditional look. And if you already have your cabinets and everything, and you're looking for just like a sleek way to add some under cabinet lighting, we have featured these lights um, we found on Amazon and they're just like these light bars that are rechargeable, they're motion censored. Mm -hmm. You can install them with shelving in closets, but underneath the cabinets, they also work really well. Toe kick lighting is really popular. We do it mainly in bathrooms. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people like to have it as a night light at mm -hmm. night. Um, but some people like to have it in their kitchen. For those midnight as well. snackers. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> it's a nice way to find your kitchen at night. And yeah. Be, you know, trying to find your light switches if you don't have an automated home. Yep. Um, but something to know is that when you put a lighting on your toe kick around your kitchen, 
You will now see everything on your floor. <laughs> All those crumbs. Yes. And that is the one, the biggest surprise to people when they do it and the one thing that they don't really like about it. Yeah. And with both of these, the under cabinet lighting and the toe kick lighting, mm. make sure that you are aware you do need like a light switch for these, right? Yes. And where is that going to go? Yes. So, so plan. both of them can be motion sen censored. Um, However, the toe kick motion sensor one could be a real pain because your toes are always, <laughs> always <up underneath>. <laughs> and, and that could be Dance very party. useful, but it could also be a pain. So just know that that one might be better served on a switch. Yeah. Um, whereas the under cabinet, you literally have to wave your hand, but you need to plan for the placement of the switch if it's going to be switched. Yeah. So when you're doing your kitchen planning, do, don't forget about where are your light switches going to go. Mm -hmm. And if you have an architect or if you have a home designer or an interior designer that is planning out your kitchen, please go over that placement with them to make sure that it surfaces you the way that you like to have a light switch surface. Yeah. Make sure it's not behind something. Yeah, user friendly. Yes, yeah. yes. And that's super important. So. Don't ignore that and just assume that everybody's got that handled for you. <laughs> if you have an island and you're trying to figure out what's going to come hanging from there or in the ceiling, you really need to plan that out. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of information that you can find online about uh, how to place your lights over your island, how far apart to put them, how, t how high to put them. The problem is, is that what's not in that de those details is how big is your island, um, how tall are your ceilings, how big is the light fixture exactly. that you are wanting to use. Mm -hmm. So none of that is taken into account. It's a very, very rough explanation of where to put your light fixtures. So if you choose your light fixtures before everything is start your construction has started you can actually place those in your plans and know exactly where to put them yeah if you do not have those chosen yet our suggestion is to wire for them leave the wire up in the ceiling what you'll need to know is how many you want have them sheetrock over it and that wire will be pulled through for a junction box once you've decided on the fixtures that you want for your island. Yeah. Another thing to think about when you're choosing island light is that how high are your ceilings and how long or how short that fixture can go. Yeah. Because some of those fixtures cannot be altered in any way. Some of them have extensions that you can add different links to get what you want or take away links to get the height that you need. Some have chains that are a lot more flexible. Chain is always the most flexible, but not everybody likes to have a chain for their, their pendant light. So if you were using a rod, you need to know how high it needs to be up from the island. I would not go any lower than 36 inches from the countertop for your fixture. Anything lower than that, it's going to be in someone's face or yeah. someone could potentially hit it when they're reaching across your island to service someone else on the other side. Yeah. So we, our sweet spot that we like to go is in that 38 to 42. Mm -hmm. We find that, you know, that works well for that eight foot to 10 foot ceiling, even a 12 foot ceiling, you can do the 42. If you have a really, really tall ceiling, well, then maybe you can go a little bit higher proportionally. Yeah. But remember, it's got to have enough light to be able to get down onto the countertop. Mm -hmm. Unless you have additional lighting that is servicing the island. Yeah. And those are just mood lights. Yeah. So the other parts of your kitchen that's going to have lighting is the outside of your kitchen, which is commonly called the perimeter portion of your kitchen. That area can be serviced by vent lighting so your vent hood liner or your vent hood will have a light in it you have under cabinet light so that's lighting up your countertops mm -hmm. and now it's about your overhead light and your overhead light would in most cases is 
can lighting. And LED can lighting is the way to go mm -hmm. for sure. And uh, we do 3000 K is kind of our standard is what we use. So that is going to go all along your parameter so that you can light up your countertops, your cabinets, and your walk space. When you uh, place the cans, you want to angle your can so that it is lighting the front of the bottom cabinets and lighting into the upper cabinets. And we find that staying in that foot range from the cabinets mm -hmm. will get you in that sweet spot. Mm -hmm. You wanna make sure that when you're doing can lighting, there's a grid. And so look at it in the ceiling. So when you're looking at it on a plan or think about the ceiling, what that grid is gonna look like. At some point, can lights intersect one another unless you have a galley kitchen. Mm -hmm. So in that kitchen, if you have an L-shaped, a U-shaped, whatever that kitchen is, and as they're intersecting, and they're servicing different areas, you wanna make sure that they're staying on a grid pattern or when you change that pattern, that it makes sense. And if you don't have under cabinet lighting, um, you'll want to maybe move those can lights in a little bit closer to the cabinets to account for that. Yes, or buy those ones on Amazon. Ah, uh, I'm we telling you. love them. We love we'll them. link them down below yeah. so you can find them. Mm -hmm. And then as far as like when you are picking out your island lighting, um, like all the finishes that you can pick from, you do not have to go with the same finish throughout your entire kitchen. Mm -hmm. So just know that, you know, I feel mm -hmm. like it can still look really cohesive and mm -hmm. by mixing and matching certain, you know, finishes. It doesn't have to be a certain shape. It doesn't have to be a certain size. Yeah. Uh, you just want to make sure that it's not overwhelming for the island. So it or to be underwhelming. Size. Or underwhelming. I mean, sometimes you see very <laughs> tiny lights. And take those things into consideration. A great way to do that is look at pictures and see or have an interior designer help you, which we think that's very important. Yeah. Another thing in the kitchen to really make sure you spend a lot of time researching is the hardware you're going to be using. Mm -hmm. So cabinet hardware, there's so many options out there and there's so many great budget friendly ones. Um, but knowing like really, what are you paying for? Mm -hmm. I mean, I could, we've seen ones that are completely like four times as much as other ones, but these ones seem still good. So what's the difference? Mm -hmm. What the hardware is made of, so there's different types of metals, right? Mm -hmm. That the hardware can be made of, and then how it is plated or coated, um, really is what goes into, and how much metal is there, yeah, the weight. right? Mm -hmm. So the weight. So if you pick up one and they look identical, but one's heavier than the other, well, it's because the one that's heavier is going to be more money, has more metal in it. That doesn't mean that the less, the one that's lighter isn't going to last you for as long as you need it to. Exactly. So it really does come down to what is your budget and making sure that you just buy hardware that is going to last as long as you're going to have your kitchen. Mm -hmm. One way to do that is to buy from reputable cabinet hardware companies and go to your um, cabinet hardware stores. You can do it at plumbing store. A lot of the yeah. plumbing warehouses have cabinet hardware as well. Um, and you know that you'll be fine looking in. And try them out those. there. Get the feel of them. Know feel what it. it's going to be like. I mean, yes. there are so many options. And really, until you feel them in your own hand, mm -hmm. you don't know. Mm -hmm. All hardware has a different projection from how far it is from the surface that you're attaching it to. My hands might not be the same size as someone else's hands. So for me, it might be very comfortable, but for the next person they come in and it's not comfortable at all and they can't even get their hands in there. Mm -hmm. So think about that when you're picking out your hardware. The other thing is, is the sizing of the hardware. So when you are looking at sizing, it's going from center to center. And what that means, it is center for where it gets bolted in to center of where it gets bolted in, not from end to end, mm -hmm. unless it is a closed end hardware. If it is a closed cabinet pull, it is pretty true to the size that it's telling you. It might be an eighth of an inch shorter. If it has open ends to it, that means that it's going to be where it bolts into your surface is where it's being measured from. 
if you're going to do an edge pull, which is a pull that sits on the edge, exactly what it's saying, of a drawer or a door. Um, on a single door that's not meeting another door, it's not quite as important. However, if it's a pair of doors, those two doors have to come together. So therefore, those two pieces of hardware will come together unless they are integrated into the door. So they can be cut in. So you would basically tell your cabinet person, here is my cabinet hardware that I'm gonna be using. They would take that and they would route out the side of your doors and your drawer tops for your hardware. If it is something you've selected after the fact, but you just explain to them that it's gonna be sitting on the surface of it, so they need to recess the door, the drawers, and make the doors not as tight, they will put them, uh, you can mount them on the edge of the door and the drawers, but your cabinet person absolutely needs to know that or your doors will not close. Yeah, and whoever is putting on your handles, please don't do it until they've been leveled first. <laughs> so what we also get asked a lot is, what do we do? All poles, all knobs, mm -hmm. where do we place them on the cabinets? Mm -hmm. Is there a rule of thumb here? Okay, well, there isn't a rule of thumb. Um, I think it's really a personal preference. You will see in more modern ki kitchens is where you'll see usually all pulls and not knobs. You don't see a lot of knobs. Um, or you'll see the edge pulls that we just talked about, which are very common in modern kitchens. In traditional, transitional, and contemporary kitchens, you can have all knobs, you can have all pulls. You will see more all pulls and you will see all knobs, but sometimes it comes down to budget. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so if you have to do a combination, maybe it's not really the look you're going for, but you have to, you have a budget you have to work with and the pools are going to be more expensive than the knobs. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's going to have to make your decision. So put your pulls on your drawers and put your knobs on your doors. Mm -hmm. So because your doors really don't need that pull, um, but your drawers absolutely do, especially yeah, if they have soft clothes. clothes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it make, makes it a lot easier to open them. Mm -hmm. If you have very long drawers, um, you might want one piece of hardware that's very large and long in the center, or you'll need to have two pieces of hardware. Um, if you're going to have two pulls on there, just know that what happens a lot of times is people will only pull from one side and it will torque your drawer yeah. and the glides get bent mm -hmm. and it doesn't ever close like you want it to. In fact, the soft close almost never works again because yeah. it never gets close enough to do that. So that might be something that you want to consider when you're looking at uh, your hardware as well because sometimes buying two handles is less expensive than buying one longer one. So the other hardware that you have to consider is appliance pulls. And if you are going to do a paneled front refrigerator or a panel front dishwasher, uh, you're gonna need to have an appliance pull for that. A cabinet pull usually is not big enough, the projection isn't far enough away, or it's not long enough mm -hmm. and the diameter is much thinner. So the longer you go, if the diameter doesn't change, it starts to look really long and skinny. Mm -hmm. And so on appliance pulls, what they do is they make the diameter of the pull larger so that it doesn't, proportionally, it looks right. If you want your, let's talk about your refrigerator panel, for instance. If you really want it to have that big handle like you would see on a regular refrigerator, mm -hmm. you can actually buy the handles of your refrigerator and you can apply them to the panel if that is what you want. What's nice about that too is that if you have you know, a pair of ovens or maybe an oven and microwave that are sitting right next to that, now all the handles match. On the dishwasher, the dishwasher panel is gonna be you know, 24, 25 inches in width and so you're gonna want a pull at the top that just accommodates that size.
Yeah, I think we've covered a lot here. I mean, mm -hmm. we could go on and on about kitchens, but mm -hmm. um, we hope that this really helps you with your kitchen design. If you have any comments, any questions, feel free to l let us know. We'd love to help you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.